Hey there guys, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the Code Lab channel and welcome to my modern JavaScript crash course for beginners. In this crash course, we're gonna be learning the fundamental basics of JavaScript so we can take you to the next level on your web programming journey. If you guys are new to the channel and like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you turn the notifications so you never miss an update. Now, just like my previous Crash Course video, guys, I'm just gonna go over a quick introduction. So the course is a continuation of my CSS Crash Course. So if you guys haven't checked that out, I highly recommend doing that first. Now the contents, as explained, are the fundamentals of JavaScript. So we're gonna be learning what JavaScript is, looking at data types, functions, loops, and many more. And as always, guys, just a few prerequisites before starting this Crash Course. It would be beneficial for you guys to have a basic understanding of both HTML and CSS, as this course will involve both. I do have a crash course on both HTML and CSS, if you guys wanna check that out before coming onto this course. Now with the introduction out of the way, we get to the important question, what exactly is JavaScript? So JavaScript is a scripting language, and these scripting language are coding languages used to automate a process that users would otherwise need to do on their own. So if we had no scripting, any changes on our website you visit would actually require you to manually reload that page. So essentially JavaScript does the heavy lifting by telling computer programs like websites or web applications to do something. So some of the things you see on the screen now, so sliding through images, on the home page, displaying a timer, uh, displaying animations, drop down menus. All these are some of the examples JavaScript can do. And some other examples you see every day but don't actually notice are like when you're on Twitter and the timeline automatically updates or when Google suggests search terms based on a few letters you start typing in the search bar or giving this video a blue thumbs up. In all these cases, that's JavaScript in action. Now, for many self-taught programmers, the power of three, three being HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is usually the journey people take so for those that aren't too familiar, HTML is the structure of your web page. So the header, the sections, the footer, the asides, text, or any images you might want to include. And then CSS controls how this page looks. So the aesthetics. So you customize fonts, background colors, all sorts of things. And then once you've created your structure and your aesthetic vibe, JavaScript is that magical third element. And all that does is just make your site or project much more dynamic. And then the combination of these three elements together form the backbone of web development. Now the really beautiful thing about JavaScript is that adding interactivity to websites is not the only thing it can do. You can develop mobile applications, you can create web browser based games, or you can even get involved with backend development, which is a term used to describe programmers who kind of work behind the scenes of websites, which focuses much more on server side development. So things like a database, um, which we're gonna be going into in the next slide. Now, as you can see from this slide, we've got client side and server side. Now, JavaScript is primarily client side, which essentially means that the action that takes place on the user's computer or the client's computer, and what I mean by action is essentially what we ask JavaScript to do. Now, in order for a programming language to do its job, the computer has to actually understand the language it's speaking. And almost every computer in the world understands one programming language, and that's JavaScript. And for this reason, most things can actually be accomplished using JavaScript, um, which is why JavaScript is so popular. Now, to our right, we've got backend development or server-based programming. And these kind of scripts can actually run before web page is even loaded. And as mentioned, they're needed for anything that requires dynamic data. So things like storing user login details. And some of the most common server-side languages you'll see is PHP or Python or, or Java. Now, when a server-side script is processed, the request is sent to the server in this example here. And the result is then sent back to the client. And as mentioned, this is useful for websites which store large amounts of data, such as search engines or social networks like Twitter and Facebook. And the reason they do this is because it would be really slow for a client browser to download all this data. Now again, the beautiful nature of JavaScript is that it can be used for both. So you can have it for client side and server side. And this is done with Node.js. Now this crash course is for client side JavaScript, so we won't actually dive into Node.js. So that'll be it for the video guys. Again, if you enjoyed the content, please hit that like button to show your support and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.